six o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions? To yes, I have four, please. I have an application to work in the right of way. Um, I have an application to do an asphalt cut. Um, appoint fire chief. And then waive late homestead declaration fees. All right, next, approve the minutes. First, uh, minutes of September 3rd, 2019. Make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further dis discussion? Yes. Um, yeah. The Boulanger Lane discussion, uh, <coughs> the motion failed to carry with a zero to five vote instead of carried with five to zero. How did we do that? Because it does say pending inspection. Yeah, I thought it was tabled. Yeah. I thought, yeah, that's what we, we just, did. Table. That's right. Because there was a... We tabled until we found out what the assessment was mm -hmm. with that's highway, right. what it's going to take. Okay. So we just know that it was tabled instead of... Yeah. Carried? I think that's... Or is that the, the, the second motion? Right. The motion was made and then... To accept it, then it was tabled. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we didn't carry okay, it. I understand. I understand. We, the motion was made, but we, we ended up tabling it. We didn't. We didn't actually vote on the Right. We did that on a few of them. Yeah, we did. It was very confusing. We did. It was. Sorry about that. It was. It was. Okay. Any other discussion on that? <clears throat> so there's no changes on that then? Right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So pass. The minutes of September 9th, 2019. Make a motion to approve. I'll second you. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass. <clears throat> All right, community concerns. Denise, do you want to give us a rundown? Um, this is just regarding the waiver uh, change that uh, the board voted for at uh, the last meeting uh, to change 25%. Um, we also wanted, if you wanted to go back to the planning commission and see if they would have any issues as a directive to change it to 25%. So they're all on board with this, I guess, at this time. And I would like to see that this uh, change be in effect this fall, uh, rather than waiting an entire year for the change. I think it's really for the good of the community to have this changed, and I'm hoping that we can do that this fall. Got any other comments about it? I, uh, Go ahead, Rob. <clears throat> I've been here for one meeting, and, uh, and I attended the original meeting where she, uh, she was and a client were at for the planning council. And at that time, I spoke up that <clears throat> that, I, that that the current 15 percent has been that way since the beginning of the of going in the town. And this is all starting with a parcel of land on Maple Street. My concern is uh, if this 25% is the whole town, that this is like going backwards on our zoning. At the last meeting here, which uh, you were away, I did suggest that maybe looking at doing the 25% in the village since the planning count, with, uh, MCC, with their um, <clears throat> questionnaire that they've had for over the last few years, have uh, noted that the people wanted development to occur closer to the village or in the village. So, in the, I don't know how the zoning right to set up now, but there used to be a chart for the different zones that are in the town. 
and each one had a breakdown of what could be setbacks or whatever. So I don't mind if it's in the village, the 25 percent, but to spread it out to the whole borders of the town, I really am not for that. Yeah. And, and I also think, though, that with the waiver the way it's set up now, it still has to meet uh, two of the six criteria, though. So it's not an actual, it's just opening up a conversation to bring a change before the board and say, hey, look, you know, it meets the requirement of the 25% setback change, but it still has to meet six of the two of the other six items within that. Well, I read the criteria, and they're good, but it's still. <clears throat> I'm looking at the potential for development in the town, and it's already in an attack at a previous approved uh, subdivision out on Route 100 that the property owner wants to subdivide from a 3.9 acre to so we can have another house out there, and, and uh, it can occur. I mean. The 15%, I've gone through that. I on the uh, DRB or Planning Commission at the time that <clears throat> a woodshed was too close to the line. And not on the line, it was, but it was within the, uh, the 15 or 10% setback that was out there. The property owner did, book, uh, adjoining property owner did object, and it was turned down. But by increasing the number to 25%, it's opening up the door to more attempts to, um, I say, attack our government. It's been in place for, since the 70s, you know. So that's why I say not the whole town, but in the village limits, in the residential areas. Todd, do you have any comments on it? Personally, or for my board? Both. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal making the change. I really don't. I think if you look at the waiver percentage in other communities, we're really on the low end. So uh, with that being said, my board is opposed to it. Um, but the bigger picture here is you told them to do it. It's done. So the 25% is already in the bylaws. It will be included in the next bylaw update. The timing of that, that's what um, that comments from my chairman. He's in Brazil. Um, He'd like to keep our zoning updates on a regular schedule. He says it helps us, it helps the council avoid reacting to um, reactionary rule change or small rule changes. There's not much on there, and there's taxpayer expense, real expense, newspaper ads, and uh, staff time to do a zoning update. There's really not much for a zoning update. They've agreed to this, it'll be done in, in the spring, like every other zoning update, they're allowed to keep their schedule, unless you tell them otherwise. They're really not talking about whether we do it or not, it's done. You're just talking about timeline. That help. Is there any other comment? Well, one of the comments, Bob, is I understand Ron's comments, but what's good for the goose should be good for the gander. I'd like to keep our bylaw the same. We have a waiver in the village of 25%. Keeping the same waiver across both is keeping our bylaws the same across both communities is really advised. The more you split the bylaw, the harder it is to navigate for the average person, because the average person doesn't you know, live in the village in the town half the time, unless they live right in the core of downtown. Any thoughts on it, Brian? <clears throat> I, I can appreciate where you come from, Ron. I, you know, when I when I first got on board, we didn't have Dan and we didn't have Todd. And um, I used to attend a lot of planning meetings and DRB meetings. I, I attended all of them for about the first year. And um, I just felt like our zoning was so strangled at the time that um, I can appreciate, you know, trying to keep it, keep it under control. But for me, it seems like we finally opened the doors a little bit, you know. Um, that's how I feel anyway. I feel like we've, we've made good strides in the past 10 years to try to open the doors. And I think this is one more area that can help. And I, I haven't seen very many cases where it's really detrimental, you know, the corner 25%. Have you seen any situation like that, Denise, or, or vice versa, where we cost? Problems. I don't see any, I haven't seen any place where that would cause problems. As a matter of fact, I think in certain areas where it's so restrictive, 
if uh, I think there was, there was a property over in Pine Wood Estates where um, they didn't have quite four acres, um, and the zoning didn't allow you know, two acre zoning. I think wasn't that the last meeting two acre zoning, and um, so they didn't quite make it to create a subdivision for another house, and so they were trying to change the entire community. Of the zoning for the community, and instead of changing the zoning for the community, if we have this 25% waiver, and they allow them to make that one change for that one property rather than changing zoning for the entire area. So I think it's a positive thing, and I think also the way that it's written, having you know all of you know, these other goals, and that it has to meet two of the other goals um, of the waiver, I think is you know is, is protective of that. It's just not a shoe in. So I think it's a positive thing. Is there any other comments? Andrea, you were on the planning board for quite a while. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on it? I don't know enough about this one. Okay, where do you want to go with this? Well, so it's already been approved, right? It's already agreed to it, yeah. So it's already agreed to it. It's right. just a matter of when we're changing it, right? That's where we're at. Yes. But that's something we can control. Isn't that true? Correct. If you direct them to do the zoning change, you direct me to do it, I'm going to do the zoning change. There's not a lot there to change right now, so right. they'd rather wait till the normal thing, like you normally warn in April, so five months from now or so. Is there anything with that change that affects the town plan or how the town plan is? It does affect other projects, so it would affect the um, this parking changes that are already agreed to. So it would affect the developments that LHP is doing right now. If you made the zoning change right now, they would beat that parking change in. That parking is more restrictive in the downtown because we've got less parking available. Okay. So that would this change doing now would negatively impact their projects. That's just one thing, one thing that pops to mind. So though, if, if, they, if they knew that this was coming in into play, they could wait until it comes into no, play. No, they could beat, so. the, they'd beat the clock. They'd have to file before this happens to try to beat the clock on that. Yeah. Here, we don't do anything about it. What's the time on the time? If you started the process for warning this change, how soon does that change take effect? It takes me a week of work time to do a zoning change. Mm -hmm. I have to warn it three weeks ahead in the paper. Um, so the earliest I get a hearing is because of the news of citizen deadlines is about a month from now. Maybe it's really a month and a week because I need to actually do the work. You have to write a report that goes to the state. That's and notify all the surrounding towns a lot goes into it. So what I'm looking for is the, the the soonest that if we did this right now, the soonest that that would actually be in effect. So that I, that could easily be warned in November for planning, and they kick it to you. You have two hearings, so the earliest you could do it really, you'd be approving it in January. That's basically as fast as you can go from starting from scratch. So now I'm going to look over at my developer that's sitting here, and we'll talk about winter and development in January. How would that negatively impact if we waited until we to the normal timeline, rather than doing it and starting that process now? How would it impact development in Morrisville if we just waited and did it on the normal timeline that they already have? Uh, Cost-wise, you mean <clears throat> cost-wise do winter construction versus summer construction, of course, into the fall. You're probably going to add anywhere from 15 to 20 percent to concrete and cycle to a project. So I can't give you exact dollar number, but that's what you do. But but excuse me, for people that were trying to develop that and started in January oh. versus waiting until May or June, that would negatively impact the project, would it not? Because Absolutely. you don't have this. In Two May. reasons why there. Anytime you anytime you put out the time to develop or sell, you've already got buyers in place. Anytime you wait longer, it, it affects a lot of the interest rate, mm -hmm. cost of doing business, I mean, at all. Yes, it is, it is a negative impact. <laughs> I, was, I was just share the concern of the planning council and the DRB that, that if we, if we need your reaction every time there's an, you know, I can understand if there's an urgency, I'm not, and I understand, it's not my money at play. If whoever's money is at play, it is urgent to them. I get that piece of it. But in the grand scheme of things, how many people are we actually talking about are going to be impacted negatively if we let them go on their normal schedule rather than 
if we do this now, it's going to create a precedence that will come back and bite us year after year after year. This is what my concern is. Any change in how we do business like that, it, it sets us up for failure. Everything gets judged on its own merit, usually, but it's a strong argument from the gallery side against us if we object to a change midstream next time. So that's my concern. My concern is changing the timeline. Uh, we're talking about the six months delay. And, and again, to some folks, that, that's a, a dollar factor that comes into play. But I just feel like it's, um, if it's a change we're going to make anyway and we've decided to do it, why not do it as soon as you can do it? <clears throat> It's still going to be the same amount of due process it's spent with the hearings and everything. Um, but I'm like, well, you know, if you're going to make the change, why drag it out? If it's the same, your hearings and your process, you know, you cover all the bases. It's not like we're trying to shove something through, you know, but time is money. Would there be other things that have they cut? There, there's some other stuff in there already, but not a lot. That means we wouldn't be doing, I'm assuming that means we wouldn't do a regular spring zoning change. We'd only do it once this year, and we do it in the fall or winter instead of the spring. So that means it's not in now; it won't be in until a year and a half from now. Right. Danny, you had a comment. Yeah, I'm just coming back to these meetings. The only thing that's got my attention is that parking lot. I've already saw the plans for that parking lot, and we have never had so much room to bring trucks around there. If they do that municipal park a lot the way it's on the plans. Yeah, you guys haven't seen that yet. So we to me, <clears throat> we saw some early sketches, but no. <laughs> we haven't seen anything on that yet. I did a sketch that yeah. this is redid the parking any more parking. Yeah, we've been running it. We've we've still been doing staff work on that. Okay. So affecting that negatively, and that to talk with Todd as far as what's negative about it, but for that not to go through. Could be an issue, mm -hmm. <clears throat> especially the way it is right now with us getting trucks in there. But the, the zoning bylaw change wouldn't affect the parking lot, would it, Todd? It would affect that project. So the, the, one of the not changes the that parking the, lot project. Not the parking lot project, right. no. But it would affect. They would be required to do more parking. So right now the bylaw changes in the downtown. It's 0.75 per unit. We're increasing it because we're nearing parking capacity to one space per unit. So they have to create more parking as part of that project if this was rushed through now versus the normal time. Because they plan to file a plan in November or so, I believe. We're having meetings with the fire chief and water light on Thursday. <clears throat> I hate the term rush through because it's still due process. You still you have your warrant time and hearings, you know. <clears throat> The idea of rushed is still going to take six months, you know. <laughs> you know, it's not like six weeks or something like this. Anyway, that was, that's all I got. Right. Me. I would like to have the whole board be able to comment on it, you know. I think uh, I encourage Denise to get on the agenda and come in tonight to really, you know, make a step forward on it. And I, I don't see why we can't. I don't feel like it's rushed if it's something we're going to be doing anyway. But it'd be nice to have uh, Judy and Chris here too to get some comments on them and then make a decision. But sure. Do that in the next next meeting or so. I don't think I have all five of you here till October twenty first. Yep. So I think Chris is out of town. Next month. Yep. Judy's back, but I won't have all five of you till the 21st of October. So that would okay. be the next time that I have a full board. I'd like to do that, though. Okay. It's worth that. Everybody chime in. That sound good? Okay. Any other comments to that? Thanks for coming in, Dan. <clears throat> Is there any other community concerns? Next liquor control, Sarah. Do we have anything? Good. New business. Uh, let's do the first four of the application right away. Is that the paper tour?
Yeah. yeah there's the application for right away, and this is um, for, for peach repair. Yeah. They won't be cutting in the asphalt. They'll be hooked on to a sewer line. Um, yep. Um, in the right of way, so they won't have to cut asphalt, but they still need select you know, permission of the from the select board to work on the right of way. Okay. Do I hear a motion or hearing it? I'll make a motion to approve this. Second. Is there any further discussion? Is this uh you're saying it's not gonna impact the black should not impact, impact the asphalt. They're going to have the project complete. I mean, is it going to impact the, the, the traveling through that? They shouldn't impact anything there. Really, the only thing that, that the connection will be made in the actual width of the right of way. So it really should not impact anything. As far just, I'm, and I'm assuming they're going to try and get this done before snow flies. Right. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So passed. <clears throat> Next, the asphalt cut. This is for um, two houses being done by um, Habitat for Humanity on Maple Street. Um, the one thing I don't have, I just got this application today, I don't have a cost to patch the asphalt. There will be, um, the, the water main is actually easier to get to on Maple Street and the sewer will be easier to get to on Olive Street. Um, I have the dimensions, but I don't have a cost yet, so I'd recommend approving this. Um, and then I'll put the cost for the asphalt patch onto it before it's submitted to them or given to them. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding it? Make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So passed. Next, appoint the fire chief. Denny, you want to talk about it? We've been talking with the chief. We've been talking for a long time. You guys are aware of a lot of things going on. We had a long talk last Tuesday. And basically, the outcome was we were going to switch positions again. On the one condition that I told them it would have to be after the first weekend in October. Because we're going down to Maryland. Firefighters Memorial for KC, and I only think it's right he's the chief when we go down. So we were looking at, we talked to the floor about it last Tuesday, and we we're trying to stretch it to January. But with the chief starting his new job at school, he's got to go to uh, just life in general. So. We thought this would be best for the department in the town. But he's still going to remain a chief officer. It's basically what it was three years ago. Yeah, we talked to Sean, and based on the fact that he can only be here 50% of the time, it seems like that makes it the best solution. You know, he's doing a great job. We just, he can't physically be here as, as much as uh, the community needs him to be. So switching out makes a lot of sense. You have any <coughs> about that? I would just make it effective as of October the eighth. <coughs> that sound good, Danny? Yep. That would work. I'll make motion that we do. Okay. Second. Second. Any further discussion? I think that's a great solution. Thanks. Thank you for stepping up and doing that. I mean, there are just kind of full. Of that. I know your hands are already full. But with stuff going on the other day, but I appreciate you stepping back up for us. Uh, I hate to lose Sean, his, his experience um, in the fire department is, is invaluable. So, well, it's more something. or less with us, it's a number because it don't change us, right? You know, just like it did six years ago when we started this. Yep. You know, everything that happens is we discuss it, you know, so whether. I'm one, he's two, he's one, I'm two, you're going to get the same answer. So, but this way here, it just, it relieves a lot of pressure off of him, which is the main thing. And it provides the leadership stability in the department that you need. So, thank you. So, I mean, it's what we thought was best for the department and best for the family. 
Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. Thanks, Danny. You might want to let the other two know I'm back and let them know that. Yeah. They'll be a surprise. You, you still know how to do the job, Danny. Oh, I know how to do the job still. <laughs> okay. Next, uh, waive the homestead exemption. So in 2011, um, when the state decided to make um, property owners declare their homestead every year, uh, the select board signed a policy saying that we were going to waive the 3% penalty if you didn't file your homestead in time. Um, and that's what we've been doing since 2011. I was at the Vermont Parks and Tre Treasurer's annual conference this past week, and I learned that it really shouldn't be a policy, but it should be a motion that you make every year and discuss it. Um, so I make the recommendation that we continue to waive the 3%. We don't budget to collect that. It would just be three percent more on their property taxes that people would have to pay for forgetting to pay to file their homestead in time. Um, usually, it's the marginalized um, population that forget for the most part. Um, right. So I recommend that we continue what we're doing. Um, but do it every year instead of. But we're just gonna have to do it every year instead of following a policy. Okay. Is there a timing for that? discussion to happen that's better than others? Oh, um, most people do it when they set the tax rate. So uh, we are ready to start processing and creating tax bills this week. But I need to know if I'm checking the way the box or not, because it'll change the amount that people will owe. So, so we make a motion tonight. So I really need a motion tonight. Right. I make a motion that we waive that three percent. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. <coughs> Next. Discuss Halloween road closure schedule. <coughs> Cherry Avenue, Court Street, Olive Street, East Olive Street, Maple Street, Harrison Avenue, Summer Street, and Union Street. We've been doing this for several years now, <coughs> and it's been a really, really huge success as far as safety for people and the trick-or-treaters so i haven't heard anything bad about it, only good so we're recommending that we do this again i'll make a motion we do it second any further discussion richard it works out good right it works very well i just want to point out the problem so we can't do it without highway fire setting up for us so yeah generally it'd be about two hours roughly two two and a half hours Richard, I don't remember, and I haven't trick-or-treated in a couple of years, so uh, the section of Union Street between, um, you know, the south side of Congress Street, toward the PD. Yes. Is that get shut off well, as well, or is it just the interior? Union to Congress. Union to Congress. Congress. Okay. Yeah, we left that open one year. It created more confusion than anything, so. Right. Yeah, it's better to just shut yeah. that off. Or yeah, I didn't, that world goes down to the, the uh, phone building, though, that, yeah. that section of Union Street. If that was closed off, it would create yeah, no, all the confusion. Yeah, yeah, we need to keep the Congress open and walking. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, approved contract is co file technology. So we currently um, have uh, we're about to end our second five year contract. Um, our land record software when we signed the first one 10 years ago the company was DCS um, they have now switched hands corporately five times um, and although they have a very good product their customer service is um, not very good so co-file um, used to be Marathi's, which is well known in Vermont. They do all their, our, our, all of our archival paper that all towns buy. They do all the restorations. Their focus is um, just um, land records, archival paper. 
a couple of the lead develop software developers for ACS are current projects that very um, discouraged with the direction that corporate Xerox bought out this land record system. So they're in the copier world. They're not in the software world. They left ACS and went and um, joined Cofile and created basically the ACS software that we use now, but have listened to the complaints of the town and have modernized ACS for them. So a lot of towns in Vermont that have ACS are not renewing their contract, but are moving to Cofile. Uh, we've gone and seen it. Uh, Terry, the new assessor, has gone and looked from the Lister's point of view. Um, and uh, we think it's a much better software package. Uh, we've talked to other towns and they're very happy with the service. Um, they are off because we have been such a dedicated customer um, to ACS and the sales people have moved from one company to the next, so we have built relationships with them. They will give it to us for the same price that we are currently paying. They have not made that same offer to other towns. Um, there's also an additional module that we can get that I highly recommend um, that we can get a li uh, animal licensing software. So instead of using NEMREC, which is the software that the state provides, um, it's all web-based and I can give access to the fire department, to the police, to Todd's health officer. So there's 24, to Brian, 24 access that um, our emergency services can get from home or wherever and they can access um, the records if there's a dog bite or a lost dog. Um, they don't have to wait until my office is open for us to get the information for them. Um, so I would like, it, there's no cost difference between what we have currently. I would just like your blessing that we're able to sign a contract with a new company. Sounds good. Do I hear a motion regarding? Make a motion. Who do I authorize Dan to sign it? Should be Sarah. How are you going to sign it? I think it's me. Yeah, it's Sarah. Okay. Sarah, she's a clerk. That's what I'm motion and then Sarah to sign it. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. <clears throat> Thanks, Sarah, for the explanation. Number three, except bid for fuel and propane. Finance office put out the, the, the bids um, for each one. Um, Fred's was the lowest on our propane. And Bourne's was the lowest on, I'm sorry, Fred's was the lowest on our heating oil, and Bourne's was the lowest on uh, our propane. Okay. So we hear a motion regarding those. Let's do one at a time. I'll make a motion that we award the bids for fuel oil to Fred's. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. And I make a motion that we bid the propane to Morris. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, approved purchase of Vermont peanut butter equipment. So the one pieces we have in store from from my peanut butter, um, and that's I'd like to buy it for hundred dollars. Ladder, ladder, yeah. fair and reasonable price. Make a motion. Go ahead, Ryan. Make a second. Make a motion. We sell it. Have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So pass. <clears throat> Number five. Approved real estate lien. For 142 Bridge Street, William Bourne for unpaid asphalt fee. This is for an asphalt patch, and Tina has, you know, our finance has sent numerous invoices, and I know that a member of the select board has talked to Mr. Bourne you know, directly. Um, so um, rather than chasing the small claims court, you know, we just prefer to put a lien against the property for now. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Second. Any second? 
Is there any further discussion? Is there a reason? We've never had a reason. He's never communicated back to us the reason for not paying it. Um, I know he and Chris did have a little bit of discussion via email on it. So, but he, I know he's, he's gotten the, the bills. Uh, he knew he was responsible for it. Um, so, no. Do we know which exact property is that? It's one on the corner down there. Right. Right. The new apartment house oh, on the okay. inside corner. Gotcha. Well, this will get his attention. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Old business. Discuss intersection Upper Munson and Trombley Hill and Center Road. Can I can I make a recommendation that to put this one last because we have to make a phone call for that one. I know there's people here. Yes. That are. We'll flip that to the end there. Next, accept Belanger Lane as Town Road. So last time we tabled it because uh, we need to find more about. Uh, a couple things with uh, the culvert and runoff, right? Kevin, did you look at that? I did. Um, it's fairly narrow up to the ledge cut. Um, and I think that's mainly the concern that Eric and uh, a couple others have had is the ledge itself is at its widest point is about 34 feet. And so if we stay with our 50 foot right away, then we're going to be um, well over that. Um, another concern I have is that in the winter, if we have a decent snowfall, um, I'm going to run out of room pushing snow, so then I'm going to have to truck it out of there or truck it up the top and dump it somewhere else. So the be snow removal will be an issue as well. Okay, do it with a loader and then put it up there somewhere. Right. I'm just throwing this out so everybody can get it. Yeah. Your artist yeah. skills at work. Um, yeah, so this is Route 100 here. <laughs> I think that, you know, it's, it's, with that. Yeah. So there's a piece of ledge, and I think this is what Kevin and Kevin might get anything that's wrong for you, right about here. It, it's right on the edge of the, the road. Uh, you know. And then this section, you're really about right in here. Is that right, Kevin? Yes. It's about right, right on the edge of the road, where it would be just pretty well, jagged. next to impossible. Um, to get a ditch in there. I think that's the same thing that the board saw. And I think we talked to Ray too, at the end of the road, um, there's a tree and some rocks that have had multiple residences from what Ray has told us um, that would need to be moved so that there's a place to put snow at the end on the right-hand side. Because right now there's the boulders and the, um, the tree that's there. And like I think Ray's moved those boulders a number of different times. So I think those were the two concerns did I hit, nail that as much as I could, Kevin, that, that we saw on our visit out there? I understand there had been gravel added at the far end of yeah. the, the yeah, there's, spot. Yeah, there's that gravel that's, that's been added. Take care of. Yeah. yeah, the gravel I thought looked good. I noticed the tree and the stones that need to be removed. And so if some are removed, will there be enough room for snow without having a truck yet? Oh, on that end to be for those stones in that tree, yes. Um, but there's, what I'm worried about is in going up that hill and yes. in the corner, it's yes. moving the snow out of there. Okay. You're basically in a tunnel. Ray, do you have any comment about that? Did you, did you put that in up through there? My father did. Yeah. yeah. you have any ideas for what we're talking about? <coughs> uh, yeah, I know that <coughs> on the right going up there, the rock you pointed out. There is a rock there, a piece of ledge, and it wouldn't take a whole lot probably to get rid of that to help out on that side. Right. Um, the other side, once we got the, the gravel in there and got the road reestablished where it was and get the traffic out of the ditch, now it's evident that there is a ditch there, uh, but the ledge is on the, the back side of the ditch. Yeah. That's what Kevin's talking about. Yeah. yeah. So is a solution that um, is not going to be too expensive, or <clears throat> I don't know about the expense of removing that ledge. I mean, you have a better idea of that than I would, but Ray. To get an idea of the cost, we'd have to have an idea of the scope. Right. <clears throat> well, it's kind of what you get from Kevin <clears throat> for what he wants. I just I think Kevin, please once again, if I get it wrong, you were fine with what went down here. Is that correct? 
Yes, that was wider so, I mean, down there. It was wider down here. So if we I, I give me a dimension, Kevin, that you'd like to see that back. So you're talking about the upper corner there. Yes, where, just where, the where upper corner. Tightest, right in, yes, right yeah, in. Yeah, I think halfway of your mark, up a little yes. farther is probably where it is. It's up on the corner more. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's <clears throat> right in there, something like that. You know, and how much room are you talking that you need to, for your plow wings and your, mm -hmm. to be able to, to ditch it with an excavator to clean, keep the ditch clean? I mean, are you talking if we move that back an extra five feet? Well, I mean, now we're in debate on whether or not we change what is allowable for our regulars. I mean, if we're going to maintain a 50 foot right away, then we need the 50 foot right away. If we're not, when you walk in, the board says we can cut that down. I mean, we can cut it down to 40 feet and give us probably ample room to maneuver and move snow, keep the dishes clean. What's the current width? Okay. Uh, at the widest point in that corner, it's 34 feet. Does that not seem right to you, Donnie? No, it doesn't. But I'm not going to argue. If it was up here with tape, I can't say it's not. Mm -hmm. Just that my only, my only thought is, you know, we've that's been maintained and plowed for no, 15 16 years. years. 16 mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Well, four was my bill. I haven't been on that. I've been, been on that road to, to do any maintenance on it for how many years? You've been 12 years. years. And so now we're doing maintenance and bringing it up to the shoulders and so on and so forth. I'm just finding it hard to believe we're going to be able to plow that road and take, take care of it. That's all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can understand if that's a little tight there, taking the ledge back a little bit. But to take 16 feet of ledge out of there, if you drive up there, that just, no, no disrespect, it just seems tasteless to me to have to take 16 feet out of that corner. Yeah, but 16 feet and yeah. in or down? No, I once again, I think. Which way are you going? I think if, if it looked, I mean, Kevin, you know, this, you're, you're the, the high performer. If it, this, because there's not 16 feet back off of this one down here either. No. So I think the idea is, is to, to cut this back uh, four or five feet. Would that work, Kevin? Probably, no, yeah. something like that, so that you have room for a ditch and a way to maintain it through that. So, but not the 16 feet. Yeah. Right. But, so, but like this one, I forget what's down here. Maybe four or five feet down there too, Ray, something like that? Yeah, a little, little hill. more room there. Because there is ledge right here too. Yeah. You know, and, it, it's, and the ledge is back a little bit further in here, I think. That's it. Something it like that. Yeah, you know, this one, you know, this one is hidden by weeds, and, you know, and yeah, this yeah. one would, is is just waiting to break a wing. I can tell you that one right now. That's amazing. It's a lot more. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So, so those tree, when those trees were bushed out like they were, it kind of kept everybody away from that. But you know, we opened that up, Don did, and cleaned it up. So it, yeah. it does look a lot nicer and a lot whiter. But now that now that, you can that see rock that. does kind of stick yeah, out. Yeah. 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 So, but that one was kind of a surprise because you couldn't see it at all. Yeah. It was buried. But I think you know. Well, uh, four feet here, back, which would match probably what's down there, which would leave enough room for road maintenance and a little bit more room for the wing. Bob, you had a comment? Yeah, uh, I was with him when he measured it, and the, the ledge is there, but not right to the edge of the road, and when you're talking about a 50-foot right-of-way, that doesn't mean that in all the roads that there are zero obstacles. In fact, I took some pictures of Sterling, your roads up in Sterling Valley. Our road looks like a throughway compared to some of those places. I know there's no ditch. The lake, <coughs> in fact, like the lake is yeah, I'm sure I know what you're talking about. Uh, I thought our road was wonderful with a whole lot less amount of yeah. pedestrian impact yeah. as well as. The yeah, you're right where that is. Yeah. If you're, yeah. Talking, if you're talking more on loop road, the, yeah. the people wouldn't let them come. Right, it's right down there. there. Yeah. And, uh, right. Um, you know, uh, originally, the, I, the, maybe I misunderstood too, thinking that it would be required to take 16 more feet out. And, uh, that, that would be right. feasible. But, um, yeah. I guess what we would like to know is, will you tell us the amount that you would require 
to be removed, and if that happened, would you accept the town road? Okay. Uh, accept it as a town road. Okay. I'm thinking like what Dan said, if we can, if we can, uh, you know, work with Kevin mm -hmm. and uh, bring it back a little more to help out. I know what you're talking about. Well, you know about Elmore. Elmore roads are like that now. Uh, you know, a lot of towns in Vermont have roads there. that way. But we we try to adhere closely to what the criteria is, as you know. And um, but we also like to work with people and make sure that uh, you know you guys get what you want too. So I think working with Kevin, you know, <clears throat> and Dan, if uh, if you get it to that point, I think we're going to be fine with it. What your, what's your comment? If the highway foreman finds that four more feet is sufficient, then I back his decision on that. I'm a big fan of round numbers, but I know another two feet adds more cost, uh, dropping from 50 feet to 38 feet. The right way is still going to be 50 foot wide. Right, yeah, I just so. it's going to be up on the ledge and part of that right away. Yeah, well, if Kevin says that, that, that four feet is enough, fine. If it's six feet is best, then I'll back whatever he says. I'm hearing different numbers come out here, so I'm just. I'm looking to see what Kevin knows is going to be is going to work or not. Damaging trucks, and we're not having to go back in there and do additional work. I, mean, right. I definitely don't want a town highway to now turn into a taxpayer uh, bucket of money where now we have to go in and take more ledge out because somebody complains the roads too narrow. Yeah, I, I've talked to to Ray about that too, and, and a lot of times what I look at, I will tell you, I look into the future, 15 years from now. You know, it'll probably be a different discussion and a different set of people, you know, doing it. And, and we have found that things you know, like uh, places to put snow, everybody says when somebody's living there, it's great, yes, put your snow here. Um, then somebody sells their house and moves on, and it's like, no, you can't put your snow there anymore, even though we've been doing it for a long time. So we do have a tendency to look out in the future. So what's it going to be like in 25 years or 50 years from now? so that we can not run into those problems where a new set of landowners, new select board, new highway foreman, new town administrator, you know, are, are trying to stay ahead of some of those problems like that. So, so please understand our perspective on that a little bit. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, first off, uh, not only my interest there, my son and daughter, my, my daughter and son-in-law have a house up there and so on and so forth in a nice place. Well, they're paying taxes. Like everybody else is paying taxes, but I'm also a taxpayer on the other side of town, and I don't want to have to go back here and pay this being done later on either. So, as, it, as I was saying earlier, something reasonable and, and make sure there's no back here on it. That's got to be back enough that you don't have to come up in here and do something later on. I'm all fine with that. I think it would be good if we actually could kind of mark it so we could see because, you know, at some point in time, as a collective, if we go. Well, that's really just going to look like hell, as far as we're concerned. But we don't do it. You know, it's, you got to play all the options out. And my last question on this, you mentioned earlier that along with this, when it comes to developing the right-of-ways and the deeding and so on over to the town, do you have any idea what your personal cost is for that? I mean, do you, because it's going to be up to the association yeah. or the landowners to pay those fees. Have you got any past experience of how that racks up? I don't, we don't. I don't, no. But you're uh, right. <clears throat> yeah. So with the, with the thoughts of this, this in mind, we take that amount out of there, do it, that the town would take it over, and we should be also looking to know what all these fees and what it costs right. before we agree to it. <clears throat> Absolutely. Okay. That, that was a good point. I didn't know if you had some magic. No, we haven't done enough yet, so we kind of <laughs> had things closed up for a while. Now that we're opening them up again, we're going to find out. But. Yeah. Okay. Three. Thank you. Does that sound good, Kevin? Yes. You work with Dan. Yep. You figure it out. I think we can come to a, a good solution for everybody. <clears throat> so, Ray, you want us to meet you up there again and just figure out exactly, and then yeah. Yeah. We, we can set up a time where we can come up again. Okay. Do we, we need to make a motion? Would the board like to table this again to the next meeting? Yeah. Initial motion to table. That's right. We don't Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed?
Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming in for that, you guys. <clears throat> Next, approve engagement letter for tax sales. So at last, in the last meeting, I gave you the sample, and you made a motion to, to approve the contract. Um, but the attorney would like you to, now that he actually drafted our letter, not the sample letter, he wanted you to be able to review our letter and um, make a motion to, he wants me to sign it as delinquent tax collector, not, not authorizing the MS town administrator. Okay. Do you want to make but that nothing, motion? Nothing is changed. Right. You approved it last meeting. So moved. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So pass. Discuss Pocket Park. Oh. Hey, all right. Yes. <laughs> Let's make it quick. It is going to be really quick. So the Pocket Park, hopefully, they can start tomorrow doing some digging on it. Um, we looked at the trees, no, looked at the trees, the four trees that we have in there. Uh, I talked to Buckwheat about it, whether we could pull them out and replant them back in because we are doing drainage work all through there. Uh, Buckwheat's opinion was that you are going to kill those trees. They're already half bent, they're already mapped. The downtown board agreed to replace the four trees. I am here to get your blessing that it, you're all okay, that we're going to take them down, but we are replacing all four trees with new trees. Is that how he said it? No. <laughs> well, Thank you for the editing. <laughs> I thought I should edit it a little bit about how I heard about it. <clears throat> so, uh, Do you I need a motion? To no, I just uh, no, we just, wanted before, to just, before it was, somebody saw the trees were cut down and, and gone, and, and you get a phone call about it, it's always. Tell them to call Buckwheat. Yeah. Um, I'm not having a call Buckwheat, I just say. But. He'll let them know. <clears throat> All right, thanks. Thank you. Next, approve warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So pass. What's up? Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. we can discuss the intersection of Upper Munson and Trombley Hill and Center Road. Do you want it? Oh. Chris? Hi, Dan Lindley here. I'm going to put you on speakerphone, okay? Chris, can you hear us? Yep. Hi, Chris. Still there, Chris? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Hey, congratulations, buddy. Like it? What do you say? Uh, Chris, you're, you're broken up a little bit. Yeah. Did you guys look at the road tonight? We looked at the road last Monday, last Tuesday, with you. I didn't know if you'd seen it since it was done. No, we haven't. It, did you build it up, up there? We built it up and then uh, some of the brush was cut and it was done. And uh, is it cut that tree, but the longer we had the brush around it was, was removed. Yeah. Did you go up there, Kevin, to look at it? I did. Uh, we cut, did cut all the brush on the upper side in between the Trombley and the center of And I got with Dave, and the best we can get there is Thursday to cut that tree down. So, so we can cut it down. So the tree's going to be removed. Good. <clears throat> so where do we stand on it? What do you guys want to do? What are your thoughts? Your thoughts okay? I'm good with it. What, uh, <clears throat> I was chatting with Dan earlier today, and we were talking about putting some language in that says uh, <clears throat> if uh, down the road, when it gets busier and some of those lots are sold, we can take a look at if there's a problem, we can, uh, you know, maybe make a change. Yeah, I think you know, just so everybody understands, you know, there's there's the potential for commercial development out in that area, and what my work, 
now might not work after that development takes place. Um, and that's my concern, um, so that if something changes in the intersection, then um, the select board and CCS or, or Chauvin's or whoever's developed would get together and revisit the alignment of the intersection and any improvements that would need to be made. Um, so, and I think that, you know, right now it works, but I think development later on could force changes, you know, that what would be just, would be the two stop signs on um, what would be Trombley, and then the new upper Munson, that probably would work right now, but there's the chance that future development could change the, the amount of traffic and the input to that, or the impact to that intersection. And do something like, like Eric was talking about, from the stuff where it would need to be realigning. Where it would need to be made at that point in time into a four-way intersection. But at that point, CCS, so the, the developer is not gonna be involved in that change, would they? I think that's up to the select board. Yeah, it's up to us. <clears throat> Hopefully the amount of property taxes that we pay on all our other properties will offset over all these years before that someday may or may not have to happen where it can just be a town decision to go forward. I mean, we only put this road in. We, weren't, we would have probably never put this road in had it not been part of our requirements for the DRV in order to sell another parcel of, of land that road needed to be constructed. I really don't think that we should be on the hook for what may or may not happen in five or what happens if we don't own any of that land next year. Right. I think we're looking at any realignment or any change based on usage up there we're going to end up working within right of ways because like Chris said they may have sold properties they don't even own properties so now we're having to go to private landowners to realign so I mean I I do not think they should be on the hook for something five ten years down the road for a change I, I just don't if we're going to accept that upper Munson Avenue as a town highway is that part of the discussion tonight not really is accepting it as a town highway because it's not done this is just about the alignment of the intersection okay. um, when I think you know this road since it'll be a through road it, it is, is under different criteria you know as part of your policy so the the six units wouldn't apply or the five units wouldn't apply because it is a through road so it's not a dead-end road so it, it the, the policy is a little bit more lenient, I think, with through roads than it is for dead-end roads. So it would meet your policy once built to be considered as a town road. And right through so, because there will be a lot more public traffic on that road than there would be for a dead-end road. So our discussion tonight is just about, just about the work that's <clears throat> currently done. I have driven by the right. work that you did. did. Yeah. It's, it's um, more so that, you know, that, so that CCS and the show vans understand what the select board wants for the, the final alignment of the intersection. I, I gotta believe we gotta put a date on that. I, I don't I don't feel that we're we're being fair if we go out too far. If we see if we put this into place now and we run a year, what if give me a timeline shorter than five years hmm. and that alignment does not work and needs to be realigned. Then, then okay, but I, I mean, I, I just don't see us holding them hostage on this for years and years and years. Yeah, that's so. fine to me. Yeah, I don't believe in five year, but I'm thinking that we shouldn't just accept it the way it is because we don't know for sure either. Agreed. I don't. But we need somebody to do a study there because again, now that he's building the road and going to sell the property, I, I think we want it working now. And like you think, if it's going to work now, it's good. But if it's not, maybe. Well, I'm thinking a year from now, we're going to have a full calendar year with which to watch that intersection function through the winter, spring, summer, and fall. So all, all, any of the factors, weather and otherwise, will come into play within the next year. And then we, we take a look at it again. I, I know the development's not going to happen in a year. No. A short timeline, but I just don't know what timeline we should be. A year is fair. Say in a year from now, if things aren't working, yeah. we'll change it next year. Yeah. I think that's reasonable. That sounds good, Chris. Oh, here it is. 
I don't even hear. Makes sense to me. I didn't know if you were talking to me. Yeah. All right. Well, that sounds good to me. After that. that, that works on our end. Can we use 30 September as, or, or 1 October? What, what date do you want to use the year anniversary? Let's ask you. 30 date. September. 30 I September? Run. Yeah. 30 September 2020. Yep. Yeah, if things need to be changed, we'll, we'll um, you know, help to reconfigure whatever on the intersection to make it better. That sounds good. Yep. Are you happy with that? Yep. Okay. So right now, I mean, there's really, you know, I think there's really no motion for the select board because the, the new road will have a stop sign at it. The existing stop sign on Trombley will stay and everything else will stay the same. The tree is going to be taken down and the brush is cut back. And you're okay, Kevin? All right. mm -hmm. Yep. Long as I don't have to stop, we won't do it. Right. Yeah. The load of salt trucks, not going to lie. All right, I guess that's all we need, Chris. I appreciate you being available. I appreciate it. Have a good night. All right, you too. Okay. So we don't need a motion, so. And that's good. All right, moving on, TA report. I really don't have anything tonight. No. Wow. Man. I mean, I do. There's, Good. there's really, there's still stuff going on, but it's the same stuff that we've been working on all summer. Yep. You can see it. So there's really nothing to talk so about. The signs and whatnot are still floating around the village. They're working on getting rid of that stuff. The one lane road. It's on Congress. Yeah, well, they've been doing a lot of work during the day. You know, um, they're still bridge. paving their, what they're doing is the transitions to driveways and okay. parking lots. They're still working. Okay. So they have been doing traffic control for that pen. I right. don't think they, I think the painting's all done. Um, did they replace the traffic light yet? Yes. They yes. did? So you just a little, but they were working on Brooklyn Street um, today, doing all the transitions for the, the driveways and the parking lots. So they're not quite finished yet, but I think for the most part, eh, by the end of the week, they may be. Any contact, comment from the public? Um, just to... Most of what, you know, I've, I've seen some comments about some, some of the grit stuff on the sidewalks, but, you know, that's hard to do when you're paving to get that cleaned up, and uh, we'll be putting our own grit down on sidewalks, and yeah. so, um, and that'll clean up, you know, over time. I guess I was more curious about the new crosswalk by the Bijou. Everybody, I haven't had any complaints about the okay. crosswalks at all. I think those are working great. And, you know, Todd and I looked at both the one over that one and the one over, um, <clears throat> Pizza on Main, everything seems to be aligned much better with those crosswalks right now. So uh, just a quick reminder to the board, we'll be doing the painting over on Main Street, not them, because we have some things that we want to align a little bit different than what the state could do. So we'll be doing that over there. So as far as alignment, I, Todd, have you heard any negative comments? I no, think they're working well, good. <clears throat> so I think they're working good from what I've seen. The stop bar is in the right spot now too, mm -hmm. the intersection. Yeah. <laughs> they heard you. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Any questions for Dan? Select board concerns. Brian. Uh, Eric. I would have brought this up before the meeting, but I was running late. I didn't have a chance to talk to you about it. I'm curious if you and Kevin could take or Kevin could take a look at the S curves, Washington Highway, the other side of the armory. All summer long, of course, you talk about it all the time. I live up there. There have been so many close calls with pedestrians. It's a popular walking area for Copley employees and everybody else running people walking, walking facing up. traffic, not facing traffic, by the guardrails, not by the guardrails. It is completely blind. Okay. My question was, I know the Greaves family was looking to deed a section of land of the town of Morristown in that corner, in those corners. And the Conservation Commission went and looked at it and said that yeah. that was a good idea. I don't know if that ever happened or not. I don't remember if, I don't think we've seen the conversation, paperwork. Yeah. We had the conversation about it. So I don't know if we own that land yet or not, or if that's still in the works. You should, you should own a little bit. I, I don't do the deeding, um, although I do sign the deeds, actually. I don't yeah, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't accept the deed, though. Yeah, so they've got the lots for sale. We're supposed to own that by now. So if we don't, that should be, someone should be calling the grease and saying, hey, we need to finish that paperwork. Yeah, because that was, that was a condition of the Permanent development. Edition, yeah, it's yeah, a so, conservation subdivision. Yeah. So they, they have to give that. I don't know if it was ever... If we can see if that was That's completed, fine. that'd be so, awesome. And then if it has been completed, it, that allows us to cut... Farm? Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, a lot it's a lot of five in that conservation subdivision. Yeah. It's that corner piece right there, right by the guardrail. My point yeah. is it, it would allow us to cut even further out of the right-of-way if need be. I want to open that line of sight up through that S-curve. 
Yeah, okay. that's probably one of the more dangerous spots. I hate down. that corner. I hate it. Okay. And the deer cross there all the time. Yeah, my wife the agrees. No, no, we, we, we can at least go over and get the, the mower out on the other side of the, the guardrail and reach yeah. down in there. If the bank drops off yeah, it's gone. extremely straight, steep down through there, the only ones that use it are the deer. And when they come over the guardrails, it's a big surprise. Okay, we can look at that. Thanks. That's better than a speed bump. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> the one comment I was going to make is <clears throat> I know I don't think we can do anything about it, but you know, bicycles on Randolph Road is like such a dangerous thing. There's no shoulders in most spots. <clears throat> bicycles tend to stay in the middle of the road or go, you know, side by side. And then they get mad at you if you, can you go by them close when there's another car coming. It's like it's such a Russian roulette situation there. But yet I know on some of the maps it suggests Randolph Road is a beautiful spot to bicycle. It's like it's the wrong spot to bicycle. There's no, no road. And I don't know if there's anything we can do, but I just hope it's not a bad accident. I still hate the bridge there that's super narrow where we did have a problem. Mm -hmm. No, Denny. That's the state. The state says you have to give bicyclists four feet right away. I would never get anywhere. Huh? I would never get anywhere. No, nope. and, and you're supposed to yield <clears throat> to come up behind a bicyclist for the car coming towards you because if you cross any center lines and there's an accident, you're at fault. The bike to this isn't. The state of Vermont has given them so many rules that they don't have to ride right of the white line anymore. They right. can go with the flow of traffic. They're supposed to stop at intersections and everything else. I know. But I there's so, there's there's so many spots on. In a week. Yeah. On Randolph Road, there's so many spots you can't do it. It's you come around the corner, you're right on them. Well, and that's, that's with a car coming the other way. That's why they won't yield to vehicles. Right. Because the state of Vermont says these rules are for bicycles. Right. Because <clears throat> my question was, why aren't they registered? Why aren't they insured? Yeah. Why aren't they that licensed? That's part of the road tax. To pay for the roads that they use so freely. Right. And nine times out of ten, the ones in the matching little suits. <laughs> Spandex people are going to be the worst ones on the road because they'll ride three across. We've come, I've come up with them with my truck with my siren, mm -hmm. and they just look at you. Right. Yeah, okay. You have the right to be in that section of road, but you're going to be dead right. Right. That's why I would say you're, you're right, but you're going to be dead right. Right. It's like people in a crosswalk, a crosswalk, crosswalk look. starting right out with a car six inches away. They're got the right. They can go, but they're going to be dead about it. <laughs> so yeah. the scary. Thing, the thing it's with the scary. state is yeah. there's a, not a lot as a board you guys could probably do in the town because of the state. Right, for the Randolph Road is especially bad, but no. Yeah, and how no much would that cost to widen it? I can tell you my concern about no, charging registration fees and all the other stuff you're talking about for bicyclists, is that when they, if and when that happened, the state would then mandate that we pave our roads four feet wider. The cost of the taxpayers is going to be enormous if that happens. Well, it will never happen because the question I got from our current, current governor when he was running for the first time at the Vermont State Firefighters Association meeting was there's no way to enforce it. That was his answer. Was there's no way to enforce that to register and stuff like that. The PD does their job. They're pretty quick to pick me up on my motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they have time with four sides. <laughs> four bikes too. <laughs> Just saying. I mean, I've seen a bike in Wazuski blow through a stop slide, and the third car back was the sheriff's department, and they had to pull over by the end of the bridge. Well, I can tell you that I watched Ronnie Audette pull a bicycle over right by Bourne's on Randolph Road not yeah, two weeks yes, ago. And he rides a bike. Yes. You know, He's so fast, that's why. It's just, 
Bill, I have a bonus to file. Yes, I have not. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a recommendation out on, on Randolph Road that they, they ride signal yeah. file. Is there a way to get Randolph Road off that list? I know, that's what I say. It's the most dangerous place to ride a bike. Oh, we get plenty of you know, complaints from the bicyclists. Oh, I'm sure you do. Probably about me. Uh, you haven't been listed yet. <laughs> it would well, be me. Of course, they're, they're wearing GoPros now, so they Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. The one rider that sent us three different nice. picture of it. I mean, F-250 it. blowing black smoke. Yeah, well, we didn't get it. Oh, yeah, that was the best. Hmm. You swept your car every day. Yeah, just, uh, I know, I got eight cars, can't find me in every one. <coughs> I feel you're paid, Bob, but... I know, I'm paying registration for all those bikes. <coughs> all right, that's all I got. Is there any other business? I was um, recognized at the conference, the annual Parks and Treasurers Conference. I'm now an official certified Vermont clerk. Oh, I saw that. Congratulations. Oh. And I took my last class, so next year I'll be recognized as a certified Vermont treasurer. Awesome. Very nice. Congrats. Good job. That's a pay raise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great You're job. You're a taxpayer. I'll give you the raise. <laughs> On that note, it's a good way to end the meeting. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. See you two tomorrow at 1.